So today we are looking at the back end of a stripped out early 1990s Eagle Talon and we need to remove some of the sound deadening here. Our tools are going to be uh, some dry ice which will freeze the sound deadening to the point of being brittle and separate it from the body so it'll come off nice and easy. I'll talk more about this in a minute. Other tools are going to be gloves of course, you can handle the dry ice without hurting yourself. Uh, any sort of hammer to help break up the ice and some sort of chipper is always handy and of course eye protection since this stuff will not be pleasant to get in your face. Locally the best place for me to get it is it comes from a liquor store in five pound blocks. I've also seen it come as I've also seen it come as pellets. This is about five pounds, probably a little less. It's dry. It's, uh, some of it's evaporated. Pellets are fine as well. It doesn't really matter what shape it is because it's easy to break up into smaller pieces, which is what we're going to be doing. We'll start up here on this shelf. Um, other supplies, this is just a moving blanket to help preserve hopefully some of the cold and make our brick last a little longer. What you're going to do is figure out where you want to go. I'm going to start up here on the shoulder and I'm just going to break it up a little bit. Powder, of course, works really well and chills it the fastest, but that's going to boil off the quickest, so you'll use up your whole block pretty quick. Probably shooting for something about the size of grapes or so. I'm going to break this up and then I'm going to cover it up with a moving blanket. Make sure I've got that spread out pretty well here. And I'll go ahead and get, I'll get the blanket on here. There we go. And I'm not sure if the crackling is coming across here on the speaker on my camera here, but as it cools down, you can hear the whole thing cracking like a lake bed ice. And that is the sound of it working. Cracking will slow down pretty quick after about maybe 30 seconds or a minute or so. And once that gets through, you're ready to start removing it. There are some of the dry ice, some of the other removal methods or removal videos for using dry ice to get the sound deadener off will recommend like a, a rubber mallet or a ball peen hammer or something, which definitely works. It takes it off in big chunks, but you don't need something quite that violent since if the ice is doing its job, it's already separating whole sheets of it from the body and we can just use our handy dandy little prying tool, putty knife, whatever you got that's thin to work under it and take it off in big sheets. It's probably long enough for that section to come up. We're going to pull it up. And as you work on each section, go ahead and just move all your ice to the next place you're going to be working on. And in that way, you're just going to move around the interior. Ideally, start up someplace high and then sweep it down someplace low. And we'll see if this has come up here. And you can see this just cracks right up. It's lost all of its former sort of pliability and bendiness. When it comes up, it should sound like ceramic floor tiles. Just... And it'll chip right up. And that's how you do it. Just repeat it around the vehicle, move it around. This section's already crackling, it'll be ready in a minute. The cost of dry ice, um, at my local liquor store, the five pound blocks were, I think somewhere around $8. And as far as how far it will go, I am here in the back end. I've already cleared out both of the driver and passenger wheel wells and the rear bench. And I was able to do all of that with 10 pounds and being actually a little bit wasteful with it. So I would say that for the full interior of Let's say this, a two-door hatchback, 15 pounds will easily be enough for that. Uh, so for us, that would ran about maybe $30 or so. But that's about it. Get to it. Be sure to protect your hands and uh, get that crap out of there.